Hi, I'm Laura Hahn from the Center for Teaching Excellence in iFoundry, and I'm going to be sharing 10 ideas for solving quantitative problems. Some of these may seem like basic common sense, but they're actually based on research about what we know about expert and novice problem solvers. The first set of ideas are questions you can answer that will help you get started with a problem. And the second set of ideas have more to do with the mindset that you need uh, when you're in the thick of your problem. And then there's another set of questions at the end that will help you tie everything together. So here are three questions to ask uh, when you're getting started with a problem. First of all, what is a problem about? It seems obvious, but you don't want to just read the problem to yourself out loud. You want to see if you can explain it in your own words, and of course, you'll need to draw a diagram or, or sketch it out in some way. Second question, what are the underlying concepts this problem is getting at? So you want to see if you can put the problem into a bigger context of the principles and ideas that you're working on. The third question is, how is this problem similar to and different from other problems that you've been working on? And it's really helpful not to think of your problems just in isolation from each other, but you want to try and find as many connections among them as possible. Now here are some uh, ways that expert problem solvers manage the problem solving process. First, they expect to be confused and frustrated, and that is completely normal. Second, they let their problem simmer. You can't really expect an aha moment right away. Sometimes you have to contemplate it for a while. Third, uh, expert problem solvers do something. They're active. Problem solving isn't a spectator sport. If you get stuck, you need to actively troubleshoot. And this is also where working on problems with other people can also be of, of benefit. Finally, expert problem solvers don't jump ahead. So you want to be me uh, mechanical and methodical in your steps and calculations. OK, this may come as a surprise, but getting the answer is not really the end. You're not actually finished until you figure out what this, pro uh, what this answer gets you. So your first question you need to think about is, what does this answer mean? You need to see if your answer makes sense and try to interpret it back into the context of the original description of the problem. Second question at the end, could you have done this problem a different way? And answering this question can, is something that can dramatically enhance your problem solving skills. And finally, what did you learn from doing this problem? In other words, what strategies and thought processes did you use that were really helpful to you in, as you were working through your problem? So those are the 10 ideas, and I have an assignment. If you're a student watching this, this is what I'd like you to do. Try to see if you can identify one or two of these ideas and strategies that you can apply more deliberately to your next problem set. And if you're a faculty member watching this, here's your assignment. I'd like you to see if you can identify one or two new ways that you can explicitly model these ideas and strategies during your next class lecture. Thank you.